smitten he will bind us up after two days he will revive us in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. Lord, we come to you this evening, Lord, as humble as we know how, God, as humble as we understand to be. God, asking your blessing on us, Lord. Asking just like your words say, God, that you would revive us and heal us and bind us up, that we can live in your sight, God. Lord, you look beyond our faults, God. See our needs, Lord. Build us up, God, where we're torn down, God. Give us strength where we're weak, Lord. Help us, God, where we can't see, Lord. Be our protector, God, in, in dangerous situations, God. Watch over us, God. Just help us, God, as we journey and as we travel in this life's way. God, we know, God, that you are able, God. We, got, we know, God, that there's nothing that you cannot do, Lord. And God, we're supplying the faith, God, because you said it, we can't please you unless we have the faith. Now, God, according to your own word, according to your own promise, God, Come real in our lives, God. Come real in our spirits, God. Remember us, God, in a great way. Lord. God, you have mercy on us, God. Have compassion on us, Lord. God, remember that we are but dust, God. That you made us and formed us out of the ground, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. We know you will, God, if we ask, God. You said if we ask anything according to your will, you said you hear us, Lord. Remember the sick among us, God. Remember my wife, my, my family, Lord. Remember my pastor, Lord, his family, Lord. Remember my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, Lord. God, just watch over us all, God. Not only mine, but everybody, God, around the world, all over, God. Remember those that stand in need of you, God, that 
that have lost faith, God. Raise them up, God. Give them a new spirit. Give them a new spirit. Give them a new revived spirit, Lord. Help us all, God. Give us strength where we, we can be with us, Lord, in the great and powerful name of Jesus. We ask it. Amen.
All the people said amen. And he say amen again. As always, to God be the glory. Let me thank you all. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise up in here tonight. Amen. We thank God for all that we have heard thus far tonight. Uh, Brother Cherry, thank you for devotional period. Thank God uh, for you and for the gift that you are to the body of believers and certainly the gift that you are to the Mount Hebron church. Uh, thank God as we grew up talking about what our father and uncle has done and now here we are. They've invested in us for us to invest in someone else. To our singer tonight who ministered to us in song, my sister Roshanda Jones, and thank God for her to all of our 
ministers on tonight. Thank God for them, to all of them, their wives, and to our, our chairman. Our, uh, I was teasing with Sister Miller on the other day, and I was talking about our our chair and our co-chair to be and co-chair to be. And I, I, I told her that I, I need to hurry up and rush and make some assignments uh, for shorter because I think I'm going to lose all three of them to preaching. Um, I've got to at least go ahead and make them chairs and co so they could, they could be deacons for a little while. We thank God for for them and, and Brother Shorter and Sister Shorter who's always ready to come to church and Sister Fisher, another person that will be an officer when we come back. And uh, as always, uh, our music ministry, thank God for them, uh, Sister Yarker, the be coming this way about 7.30, 7.40. So somebody will kind of be watching out for her about that time too. Um, those of you, Sister Solomon and Sister KJ, uh, of course our media ministry. Amen. Sister, Sister Aunt Alice, hiding over there by, on the side of that pole. Then I have with us tonight my my classmate, Amen. I didn't know who that girl was with that new hat she got, but that's that's my classmate from a long time ago, uh, junior high school classmate, sister. Uh, I haven't called her this in a long time, sister Jacqueline McCoy. So we thank God for you. Um, God has been certainly good to us, and he has uh, shown him, himself not only God to us, but Sister Shorter, he has demonstrated how good he has been to us. And, and, and we can get excited tonight as I speak to our Zoom location tonight. Y'all can go ahead and wave at me tonight, Zoom, or you can wave at me tonight. Uh, to our Facebook fam, I want to wave at you as well. Uh, to our Instagram fam, uh, we have some folk on Insta tonight. And to our YouTube fam, uh, we thank God for you too. A church with five locations. And we thank God for every location, every believer, and even non-believer uh, that, that we be on with us on, on tonight. Uh, but Hill is trying to be messy. He didn't play the medley of the songs that I sing. Um, but I, I'm not going to let him get me tonight. Um, I'm going to move in, into the teaching uh, on tonight. Uh, let's, uh, let, let's, let's jump in uh, where we jumped off last week want to jump right in as we've been talking now uh, but chair we've been talking about uh, three to four months now uh, when the phrases have meaning and we always switch up the back point but lacks proper interpretation when phrases have meaning but lacks proper interpretation uh, let me flip the script on us tonight um, I know you don't want to wave at me. You don't want to show your hands on, on, on such as this. Uh, but I'm guilty. And, and I don't mind telling you when I'm guilty. Uh, because God uh, can evict you. And convict you. Evict you. And then reconnect you. Uh, somebody other than me. You've been guilty of using a phrase. And you had misinterpreted its interpretation. Uh, what you say it meant is not 
from Langston what the writer's intent was. And we find ourselves on the outside looking in. Uh, Sister Solomon, because we begin to wonder uh, why, why we can pray, why, Sister Cherry, we can, we, can, we can talk about this word of God and it does not seem to have any drawing power. Why, why, why we can talk about God's word. The pastor have told me, uh, uh, my dad told me that God's word has power. And because his word has power, we, we try to draw people in. And we draw them in by the word of God. But we wonder why this word, if it is, Sister Barbara Nell, if it is the same word that we know about, why is this word not drawing people towards God? Sister Lana May, why, why can we and how, how can we talk about this power in God's word and it seem as if Sister Sadler, we're talking but nobody's moving. And I, and I want to say this to us real quickly. It's two segments to church service. And I know you think I'm talking about worship and praise. But tonight is two segments because you have to have a preacher that want to listen to God. But you have to have a pew that want to feel God. Let, let me say that again. You have to have a preacher that will listen to God. But yet you have to have a pew that want to feel God. That, that we don't come to church because it's a social club. That, that we don't come because we're used to meeting in a group on Wednesdays and Sundays. But that every time we get on campus that we come to hear a word from the Lord. Now the second problem with that is, is, is many, many times, uh, uh, Brother Proctor, the, many times the problem is that we are quoting God's word. But either we are misquoting his word or we are misquoting his interpretation. And somebody tonight ought to know that you didn't write the word. And I don't care how astute, how many colleges, how many degrees, uh, there are many degrees on my wall that I earned, but I didn't write it. I studied God's word. And even though it was inspired by men to write it, my name is not in the table of contents. And many times we, we, we think that we are God Jr. That we are able to misquote God's word and say what I believe and think it has power. Power comes from the word of God when we speak it and the writer's intent so that the words that we speak become God's word is because it's God's Bible. And let me say it again tonight. Stop letting folk trip us up by telling us there are some lost books of the Bible. We can't handle the 66 we have. And we're concerned about something that you don't even see. So, so watch this, watch this. We've been dealing with this. We, we've been dealing in every child of God knows that God's word have power. There's no doubt in our mind. And, and, and since I mentioned the word power, may I, may I just go ahead and say a few things? God's word have power to heal. God's word have power to forgive. God's word have power to let live. God's word has power. And when we look at it, 
If you know that, that God's word has power, just go ahead and place it in your feed tonight that you know is power in God's word. I need about eight to nine people in here that don't mind waving at me that you know without a shadow of a doubt that God's word has power. I remember there are some phrases that stick to us. But when we think about the phrase tonight, it's the same phrase we talked about on last week, with all thy getting, get understanding. Can I tell you what we first mess up? The first mess up is we always like to add to God's word. And this is the way we say, in all our getting, get and understanding. No, that's the problem. Because an understanding don't mean it's the understanding. And understand it can be my own personal interpretation. But when I look at God's word and what it says, it says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Which lets us know that God's word has an understanding that, that, that is needed and that is necessary for us to go out to a dying world and tell them about a risen Savior. So check this out, Brother Fisher, check this out. We, we went to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and we also went to Proverbs 4 and 7. We went to both of them, and we want to utilize them tonight as a balancing beam. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and Proverbs 4 and 7. And the reason why we must utilize them as a balancing act is because they seem to carry what we know as the homonym of Scripture. That homonym of scripture, Sister Solomon, they, they sound like they carry the same meaning. They, they seem like they carry the same meaning. And maybe their interpretation may be equivocally thinking that it's the same, but realistically and unequivocally, the two verses carry different meanings. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. When you go to... Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Well, God is telling us to get an understanding. No, God is telling us to trust him. It's not all about the understanding. What God says is trust me more than you trust your understanding. And some of us are in the shape that we're in right now is because we did not trust God with what we had going on. We leaned to our own understanding and all that Solomon is saying is trust God. And when you look at him, he says trust in the Lord, not like a halfway house, but trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And when you trust in God with all thy heart, then you have no left, no heart left to trust in your own understanding. So, 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 so check it out. Check it out. He says, he says, lean on and trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't you try to figure out everything on your own. Listen to God's voice in everything you do. Listen to his voice everywhere you go. And if you do that, he's the one who will keep you on track. <laughs> Isn't that good news? If, if, if I put him first and I listen to his voice in everything I do, if I talk to him everywhere I go, then he's the one. That could keep me on track. Can I ask you a question tonight? Is there anybody tonight that will admit that you start trusting God and your life has become better? That, that, that we used to listen to our own understanding. That, that we used to try things on our own. And let me tell you, I'm a witness that I used to try on my own. And when I fail, I call on him. 
But Solomon says, call on him first and you won't fail. But when you call on him second, there's a possibility. Because no matter how intelligent you are and how smart you are, there's still some fallibility in you. But the God that I serve, he's infallible. So check him out. Check it out. Check it out. The object, Solomon says, of the wise person's trust is the Lord. And he instructs his son not to focus his trust in the law of God. But in the God of the law. That I don't place my focus on the law of God. Because the law of God by me and may edit a little bit. But when I trust in God of the law. Then I'm trusting the law because of who God is. So, 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 so he says. God is so trustworthy that because of who he is, I'm able to lean on him. I'm able to acknowledge him because he'll never fail me and he'll never leave me. You remember when we talked about that? He'll never leave me. nor he'll never leave me. Because it said he'll never fail me, nor will he forsake me. But when I look up the word fail, and I look up the word forsake. It makes me get happy because God doubled what he said. He says, I'll never leave you nor leave you. Which means no matter where I am, if I trust in him first, he's telling me he'll never leave me. Nor will he leave me. And I need somebody that's glad tonight that you're glad that he'll never leave you. So, so when we look at it, the trust does not come from the head. Check this out. It comes from the heart. Let me say it again. Trust does not come from the head, but it comes from the heart. Can I dig a little deeper? Can I mess up somebody tonight? Sister McCoy, trust don't come from the brain, but trust comes from the mind. I done messed up somebody. Trust does not come from my material brain. But trust comes from my immaterial mind. And my immaterial mind is connected to my immaterial heart. And that's why the Bible says, so is a man thinking in his heart. Because it's connected. So this trust is not to my brain. Let me ask you a question tonight. Anybody know anybody had brain surgery? Is there anybody that know anybody had mind surgery? Because you can't have mind surgery here. Mind surgery comes through the master. Because it's an immaterial part that's linked to my heart that when I trust him with everything I have, God will reward me because I trust in him. And because he knows my mind and my heart, he knows when I'm faking, he knows when I'm shaking, but he also knows when I'm real. If somebody tonight ought to go ahead and put on your feed that you know that you're real tonight. I need some folk in church tonight that's not phony, that don't mind giving me a hand clap of praise right there. That you know that the Lord know that the Lord know that the Lord know that you're real. And because God know that you're real, you don't mind nobody else knowing that God is the real thing. He's real. And, and, and then it's not... A result of reasoning. We don't have the power nor the authority to sit here and try to reason with God. God told us to believe. So it is a result of believing God. And the problem in so many of our lives is we try to reason with God. God don't care about your reason. Because I don't care how close you think you are to him. 
we're not qualified to change his mind. God knew I was going to be hoist tonight. God knew who was going to be here tonight. And, and my problem used to be to try to reason with who comes. And now God has placed in my heart and let me know they don't belong to you anyway. Your responsibility is to preach. And I have who I want to come to be there. Because many times we want a church full and we don't think that we can trust God unless the church is full. But God showed us by Gideon that sometimes he'll make you get rid of some folk so you can preach to the real folk. That it don't take all that we think it takes. Yeah, I wish the house was full when we come back. But guess what? I'm not looking for a full house. I'm looking for folk that's full of God. Because with the folk that are full of God, I get some shouting up in here. Somebody don't mind running around this place. Somebody don't mind just shouting. Coming. I wish I had somebody that when you got in the house of the Lord, you start shouting because the Lord gave you another day. Can I say this to you tonight? I don't understand how folk can come to church late and not shout when they hit the door. It's called spiritual tailgating. Because when I used to go to the Arlers game, I didn't go to too many Texans games, but when I used to go to the Arlers game, let me tell you what would happen. Before I get in, if we get there late, you can hear what's going on on the inside, Brother Sherry. And while I'm running up the rail, I'm already clapping. I'm already hollering. I'm already telling Charlie Joyner to catch the pass. I'm already telling Kenny Houston to catch the interception. I'm already telling Dan Pastorini to throw another ball. I'm already shouting. And when I get inside of the Astrodome. You can swear I was the first one there and I come by to tell you tonight you hear the folks singing from the outside. You know the preacher preaching from the outside. You came in late. You ought to be shouting before you get here and when you get in the foyer the ushers ought to be able to open the door and let you run straight on down because you've been shouting because of what you heard on the outside. Somebody ought to write to me tonight in your chat, your IM or your DM tonight. You ought to go ahead and write, Pastor, I'm ready to shout. Is there anybody in the house tonight that you just ready to shout? That you can't wait, you just ready to shout. And the reason why you're ready to shout, God been good to you today. You ready to shout. You saw a wreck and you wasn't in it. You ready to shout. God woke you up this morning. You ready to shout. You had food on your table. You ready to shout. Clothes on your back. You ready to shout. God have blessed us another day and we ought to be ready to shout. Because, because I'm ready to shout. When I look at this book called The Canonicity of Scripture, when I find somebody that fit me, when I wonder every now and then, Reverend White, am I going astray? What am I doing? God reveals somebody to me. And when I look at tonight, that I can't lean to his understanding. But what I have to do is lean to God's understanding. And when I think about this wisdom that we're talking about in 4 and 7. God showed me somebody. We talked about him last week. He showed me Abraham. And the text says Abraham believed God. And what would happen, Brother Shauna, tonight if we believed God? Stop reasoning. Stop trying to change God and just believe God. Whatever God says, we believe it. Can I tell you, we would not be so stressed out. We would not be so depressed. We would not be pulling our hair. We would not be losing our mind if we just believed God. Can I put this in your gumbo? To believe God, you have to open the book. You can't just grab your Bible on Sunday morning. 
It ought to open. Your Bible ought to never get dusty because you use it enough that you don't have to dust it off. Watch. Abraham, the father of faith, had some insecurities. And when he leaned to his own understanding, he failed. I'm talking about Abraham. That God told, leave your kinfolk. Can I pause? Some of you will never get what God trying to tell you to go because you don't know how to lead the folk that's holding you down. And many times the folk that hold us down is folk in our own families. They not trying to go where you going and trying to stop you from getting there. It's the crab crawfish mentality. They rather pull you back in instead of push you out. He told Abraham to get away from his kinfolk. And can I tell you, I kind of believe Abraham folk was messed up. And can I tell you why I believe that? Because some of our folk are messed up. Can I tell you why I believe it in the Bible? Because the one he took with him was messed up. He had to get it from somewhere. I believe he got it from his old pappy. And so many times we try to hold on to folk that God told us to leave. And you can't get no steps ahead because the one you're holding on to, you're not pulling them forward. They're pulling you back. And you don't even know that they're pulling you back. When are you going to take the shutters off your eyes and trust God? Watch Abraham. God could not provide for him in the famine. That's Genesis 12, 10 through 20. God could not give him a son when Sarah, who was Sariah, was far past the natural age of childbirth. That's Genesis 16, 1 through 4. Abraham had a lack of trust. Don't you dare pick your hands up to slap him without slapping yourself. Because all of us have put on display our lack of trust. I don't care how you dress it. We put on display our lack of trust. And when what we want to do outshines what God wants us to do, it's a lack of trust. A lack of trust is a lack of love towards God or others. And when you have a lack of love toward God or others, it becomes a problem because you have a sense of guilt when you get through that produces apparent uncaused fleeing. Can I drop this by? We are still feeling. The 4,000 year old effects of Abraham rascalities. And the more generations come behind us, the worse it's going to get. Because even us did not turn the page to walk righteous like our great, great, great grandparents. We rather walk wrong like those that right before. I come by to tell you, somebody have to turn the page. Who's going to stand? Who's going to stand? My circle of preachers used to be large. My circle of preachers can fit in four chairs now. And you might think I'm standoffish. No, I'm going to stand with you, but I'm going to leave when you start doing foolery. I'm trying to make it somewhere. And when I get there, I ain't never like to be second. And when I get to heaven, I want to be on the top shelf, top row, top seat, top table. 
And the way I get that is I have to make sure I have wisdom. You want money, I want wisdom. Because I found out money and a fool will sure poor. But when you have wisdom, anybody wised up lately? I need to see some hands on Zoom waving at me right there. Anybody wised up lately? Watch this. If God cannot be trusted with everything, he cannot be trusted with anything. And if God can't be trusted with all, he cannot be trusted at all. And some of you don't put your trust in the governor's mansion. Some of you don't put your trust in Joe Biden. You see what happened when you put your trust in Trumpet or two. But when are we going to put our trust in God? Watch it. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Watch this. Chapter 3 is dealing with an encouragement to obedience. Whereas chapter 4, Solomon is trying to persuade obedience. I'm going to give you two scriptures and you check it out. In chapter 3, to encourage obedience is why we went to Deuteronomy 6. He's trying to encourage, and how he encourages, he say, when you get home and you're sitting down, teach your children. He said, not only do I want you to teach them when, when, when you talk to them, when you sit down, but when you're walking with them. My grandmother used to walk us, and when we'd be walking to Duke and Ayers and Warden downtown, somebody had a dress and somebody had that hand, somebody had that hand, somebody had the dress on this side. And I could hear my grandmother when she coming out the store, she'll talk to us about how good God is. She'll say something like this, you see that slingshot you got? God gave that to you. And y'all ought to thank him. You see that you got, that, that little popsicle you got? God gave it to you. And you ought to thank her. She's just walking. She's telling us. She's teaching us why we're walking. And when we get home and get ready to eat, she say, now put all the stuff down. Come to the table. And she said, Lord, bless this food that we are about to receive. Because my grandmother understood that you could be sitting at the table and before grace is over, you can be dead. And she said, now when you eat it, I also have enough sense to know that I don't care who grew it, it can still have poison in it. So she said, let the food be used as nourishment for our bodies. Because she was giving us direction. She was trying to inform us. She was encouraging us to obedience. I want you to know why you're being obedient. But chapter 4 is trying to persuade. Can I tell you what I'm trying to do tonight? I'm trying to persuade somebody that don't know him to come on the Lord's side. I'm trying to persuade somebody to trust him like I do. Can I let you know I had a mint raggedy life. Which means I didn't do all the bad that the bad folk did. But I did enough bad that the good folk knew I was bad. But God still saved me. God still raised me. And right now, God still uses me. And I need somebody to admit, whether you put it in your feet or wave at me, that you know you don't have no right to what you got, but God keeps on blessing you. Anybody other than me did something wrong, but God keep on making it. I need some folk that really know if it had not been for the Lord on your side. You had a family, 10 in the family. Y'all ain't never had no money. But God put it in your heart to be prayerful and blessed with what you had and not start stealing. And you ain't never lived by the White House. You'll never even see Seattle Plantation and all these fine homes. But you thank God for a roof over your head. That you never make six digits. But you thank God that your bills are kind of being made with the 30000 that you make. And every now and then, the Lord will throw in a stimulus package. Yeah. 
that you know you used to eating peanut butter and jelly. You know you had sugar sandwiches and mayonnaise sandwiches. You know sometimes you were too poor to have any lettuce and onion and pickle. All you had was bread and some bologna. You ain't never had no health care worth nothing. But God keep on keeping your health. And somebody better shout up in this place. That you know that is nobody but God that keep you the way. Can I tell you why I shout so much? Because a lot of times when I walk up here, I'm weak. But something happens from that step to up here where the Lord make me strong. And I can't wait to get up here to say, hey, hey. Watch this. I want to mess some folk up tonight. Let's say wisdom is the principal thing. And that word principal there with the P-A-L means it's the main course. Wisdom is the principal thing, which means that since wisdom is the principal thing, I don't care if I don't get anything else. I better get some wisdom. Because if you don't have wisdom, God can't give you godly discernment. And if he give you the talents, God give you talents, but he might have to come get them and give them to somebody else because you may not do nothing but sit on yours. God ain't never told us to sit on the premises. He told us to stand on the promises. So while we come in church and can't move, can't stand up, because the president of the pew won't move, I need somebody on Zoom every now and then to stand up and start waving and start moving it and not sit glued to the seat. I need somebody on Facebook sometime to let me know you're standing. Let me know you're shouting. Let me know you're yelling. Somebody need to put it in your feed now. I'm yelling right now. Wisdom. Wisdom. And watch this. The beginning of wisdom is to get. Let me say it again. The beginning of wisdom is to get it. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. When you get it, you're getting God's truth, not man's behavior. And I like this because I use Deuteronomy for the exhortation, the encouragement to obedience. But when we go back to Acts 26 that we used last week, when Festus said with a loud voice he thought Paul was messed up. And, and, and 24 through 28 he spoke for himself. I hate to tell you, mama and daddy prayed for me but they can't speak for me. Every tug, come on help me, have to sit on his own body. Brother Sharder can sing but the shot can pray, but he can't speak for me. I think some of y'all love me, but you can't speak for me. And when Paul spoke for himself, Festus, who evidently had not been the Bible study. Isn't it ironic that the most of the church mess start with folk that don't come to Bible study? Isn't it ironic that the folk that give the preacher the worst looks are folk that don't come to teach us me? Isn't it ironic that the folk that talk about the pastor shouldn't have said that is folk that don't come to prayer meeting? And I'm like I told y'all before, 
that friend of mine that went to school with me and Sister McCoy, he sat there and said he wanted to pray for me. And I looked at his situation and I asked him, do you pray for yourself? He said, yeah, I pray for me. I said, you don't have no job. You don't have no money. You don't have no woman. You don't have no sense. And you prayed for you and got to where you are. Don't pray for me. Maybe you need to ask me to pray for you. I need somebody in the church tonight that when somebody come back to church and try to strike up a conversation while church is going on, you will stand and say, now hush, I got to hear what the man of God is saying. I'm not listening to the man. I'm listening to the word. That's wisdom. Don't join in with the mess. Just say, hold up. Let's talk out the church. I need some Jesus in my life. I need to hear what the man of God is saying. He might just say something to free these shackles off of me. I've been smiling at you all day. You talking about you, my friend, and you don't even know I'm crying on the inside. I need you to shut up. I need to hear a word from the Lord. Festus, say, Paul, thou art beside thyself. In other words, I plead that you are messed up with insanity. Isn't it good when folk think that the church folk are insane? I mean, when we start running and shouting and waving our hands and they looking at it and say, I know you messed up. I know you just got fired. I know your house just got repossessed. I know your car just got picked up. And you come to church shouting, you must be insane. No, I'm not insane. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. You know, folk are good at feeding us negativity. And if they feed it to us long enough, we'll start believing it. But I want to let you know, Paul did not look at what Festus was saying because Paul had wisdom. Paul had gone through some stuff. Paul had a Damascus Road experience that changed his life forever. And every believer in the house tonight, every believer on Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, you ought to go ahead and put it in your chat that you had some discouraging moments and God brought you out. But watch this. Paul, Paul says, I'm not mad. And he could have called him any name he wanted to. He could have called him the N word. That would have been the J word back then. He could have called him one of them five letter words or four letter words. But he still exalted him. He says, I'm not mad, most noble Festus. But I speak forth the words of truth. And I want you to know not only am I not insane, I'm not drunk, I'm sober. And not only do I know it, the king sitting up there not saying nothing, but the king know I'm telling the truth. And when King Agrippa got to talking to Paul and Paul talked, King Agrippa says, you are almost persuaded me to be a Christian. You need to persuade some folk to be a Christian. And if they don't become, they ought to say, you almost persuaded me. So here it is. The father tells his son. Solomon identifies wisdom. And Solomon identifies wisdom. As a woman. Look at it. He identifies. Wisdom. As a woman. He tells his son. To treat wisdom. In the way you would. Your mother. Your sister. Your wife. Love her. 
honor her, embrace her, exalt her. There's a bumper sticker that says, have you hugged your children today? I wish somebody would make a bumper sticker to say, have you hugged wisdom today? She's powerful. And, and watch what, how deep Solomon goes. Solomon says wisdom goes so deep that I want to present wisdom to my son as a woman he should pursue and marry. That's deep. That, that, that I want you to pursue wisdom as if you were pursuing wisdom. To make wisdom all you need. It's, it's like a bride for whom a dowry must be paid. You got to pay to have wisdom. And can I tell you how we pay? We pay through experiences. We pay through listening. We pay through studying. We pay through not wanting to be like other folk, but wanting to be like God wants us to be. Can I tell you, I found out the best wisdom I got is when I realized I wanted to be everything that Jesus wanted me to be. I may not have the best of anything, but I'm happy just to know that I'm his child. I may not be the best of anything, but I'm happy just to know. Anybody know? I got to leave you tonight. I, I told you I was just want to teach this thing tonight, but watch this. The actions and all the actions of man in pursuit of a bride displays and demands that wisdom assumes a feminine gender. But I thought about something. Wisdom couldn't help but be a woman. Because Jesus has to come back after his bride. And the only way he can come after his bride, the socket got to connect to the power source. And if wisdom was a man, all they can do it would nothing fit. But because wisdom is a woman, Christ says you can connect me. And I need somebody tonight to know that you need some more wisdom because wisdom is a woman and Jesus Christ is coming back after the bride. And I just believe God will say, here comes the bride. Can I tell you why? Because when Jesus comes back, He's coming back after a church without a spot or wrinkle. I say when he comes back, he's coming back after wisdom. I say when he's come back, when I believe God says here comes the bride. I believe Jesus says I'm on my way. Because Father, you told me. That the same way I leave you will be the same way I come back. Because you had already prepared a body for me. That I've already gone to Calvary. Because I've already died. Because they already crucified. Because they already took me off the cross. Because they already put me in a bar. Because they already thought it was on. Daddy, I thank you because you already raised me. Yeah, and you already let me talk to the disciples. Father, you allowed me to talk with two men on the road to a man. And uh, when I left the two men on the road to a man, 
their hearts began to burn with me. I said, I know I'm coming back because uh, you already let me talk to my disciples. And Lord, one of them skipped out on church. So master, you had a recall. And when I went back to the business meeting, this time Thomas was there. And because I knew Thomas' mindset, and Thomas at that time did not believe because you told me to believe in the Lord. I made sure that Thomas knew I was Jesus. And then, Father, you allowed me to catch a cloud and wave by my So I know that one day you're going to let me come back. And when, 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 when I come back, Father, I won't have to do it again. But when I come back, I'm coming back for those who believed in me before I left. That where I am, I will have you there also. I come by to tell you tonight, in all that getting, get understanding. Is there anybody tonight? that has understanding? Is there anybody tonight that has spiritual discernment? Is there anybody tonight that no mind stepping out on faith? Is there anybody tonight that you're ready to have church tonight? That you don't have to wait until the doors are open. You can have church with 20 in a room. Is there anybody tonight that when you leave tonight, start up God's car drive down God's street get in God's house that you will tell the Lord I thank you Lord is there anybody tonight that knows he's a good God I come by to tell you on my way to my seat I'll see you later but just in case uh, it's not the Lord's will to see me on this side uh, Come on up to bright glory. You see me over yonder. Is there anybody here that really believe God? If you believe God, you ought to wave your hands. If you believe God, you ought to shout for joy. If you believe God, tell the Lord glory. Is there anybody tonight that don't mind saying hallelujah? Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. What? An awesome God we serve. This is a serious period. It's so serious because there's this period is where Jesus grabbed man's hand grabs God's hand. Can I tell you something? Sister Graham, the Lord just gave me something. I believe when he stretched his hand to man, stretched his hand to God, is when he was on the cross somebody know the seriousness of the cross 
that he took man's little puny hand and he placed man's little puny hand in God's hand. And can I tell you, when you put your hand in God's hand, you can't see your hand, but you know God's got it. Is somebody tonight, your hand been slipping? It's been slipping. But it's been slipping because you've had your hands in the wrong hand. You've been trusting in man. You've been trusting in woman. How many times are we going to trust them before we give it over to God? This invitation is for those that do not have a church home. You are saved. You are sanctified. But without a church, you can't be satisfied. We ask you to come aboard. Be a part of this Mount Hebron family. There's somebody tonight that you need Jesus. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I want to give it to you. And all I have is Jesus. Well, Pastor, I ain't been baptized and I need to get in the water. I'm not worried about water right now. I'm worried about your soul. I hate to tell you, there's a whole lot of them been baptized need to be redipped. So I'm worried about your soul. Somebody in between churches, you done moved from another city. You've been joining us on Facebook, Zoom, and Instagram. We ask you to go ahead and join the church family. Place it in your chat that you want to join tonight. Leave your email or your contact number. We'll get with you. If you're on Facebook Live, you can IM us or inbox us. Somebody hit me on email the other day. You didn't leave a name. I need you to hit me back. And I want to call you and talk to you. And let me say this to you. It don't matter where you've been. It matters where you're going. Every person I know is a used to be something. If you're on Instagram tonight, you like to join, put it in your DM, your direct message. Oh, we'd love to have you. This is ours to extend. Yours to accept or reject. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Amen. Y'all know at 8 o'clock I'd like to be out of here. Can we thank God for our praise and worship? Somebody say y'all always clapping. I tell them we always like to lift other folk. We're not stuck up on ourselves. 
Because the Bible says that everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. Now we move into our next part of worship, which is giving. Let me thank each of you that already have hit Giblify. I thank God for you. Those that hit your cash app, we thank God for you. Those that will be bringing theirs by, let me tell you, make sure you push it all the way in the mail slot so that it will fall on the floor. Our cash app is dollar sign T H E. M O U N T seven eight seventeen dollar sign the mount seven eight seventeen give it a five just look up the Mount Hebrew Missionary Baptist Church Houston Texas you can make sure that you give and put in the memo what you're giving towards any of our visitors that like to donate to this ministry we ask that you will let us know you're a visitor when you give and you can place it in the memo that you would like it to go to our building fund you would like it to go to our family life center you'd like it to go to our apartment phase one project you would like it to go to the ongoing of the kingdom of the ministries of this church Lord, how we thank you for those that have given. Because, Master, you love it, you're forgiver. For those that have not given and have not had a heart to give, I ask you, Master, to prick their hearts. Lord, I don't no longer say for those who had it to give and those who have not. Because everybody can give something. So I ask you, Master, to touch their hearts and let them know their blessings are tied to how they give to you. But for those of us that are giving and have given, we ask you, Lord, that you multiply what we have done and that you make it more than enough for what we need, that we're able to continue this faith walk, that we're able to put on display what you would have us to do, that your kingdom building will continue we ask you these blessings in the watchful, wondrous name of Jesus. And for his sake, amen. Amen. As always, Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, if, if this, this ministry have been a blessing to you, whether it was singing, whether the word of God have penetrated your heart and you have learned something, you have been helped. Uh, by this word tonight, or by the singing and the ministering to us in song. If you've been helped by those that are here tonight, uh, sometimes we're helped by those that are shouting. We're helped by those that are praising God. And that's why I love a live church. I love a live church because dead folk can see a live church. They may become alive. So we thank God for each and every one of you. One last time, let's give the Lord a loud hand clap of praise. And we thank God for what he has done. Ask that Reverend White would come and dismiss us on tonight. Uh, thank God again for each and every one of you. You are welcome to come. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. For those that are not on, I think we have enough people on that you can verify, clarify, and get the word out that we will not be coming back to church person to person this Sunday. These numbers have gone crazy. We will not be coming back this Sunday, person to person. Hopefully and prayerfully by the CDC, uh, requiring even those that have been vaccinated to go back into their mask. Uh, prayerfully, these numbers can drop as quick as they have risen. Let me tell you, you can't trust anybody these days. That's right. Uh, because you don't know who has it. They may have, may be asystematic and put it on your clothes. You wipe your hands on your clothes and take your mask off when you get home and rub your mouth. Everything you rub. It may have gotten on the nastiest thing that we use, and that's those cell phones. 
So again, I ask of you to wipe your cell phones on a daily basis. Sanitize that cell phone just like you do your hands. And while you are eating, stop touching your cell phone and then going back to eating. Because germs can travel in your mouth. So again, we will not be coming back this Sunday in person. We will stick to those 20 to 25 that we have. Uh, some of you have already contacted me. Some have already contacted Sister Sims. I will be leaning on those singing groups more on Wednesday nights now. Uh, I kind of let you rest a little bit because we were coming back at this first Sunday, but we will not be coming back this first Sunday. So let me go ahead and tell you again, make sure you get the word out uh, that we don't send any more false messages that the church will be open this Sunday. And let me say this, if you come to church on Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, if you come to Wednesday Night Live, you won't have to spread stuff that's not true. You can hear it firsthand. Again, may God bless you. May God keep you as our prayer. Continue to pray for us, and we'll continue to pray for you. Sister McCoy, again, I thank God for you being a part of us. You just let me know when you would like to come, and we will make ready for you and for mom to come. May God bless you. May God keep you. Reverend White, we're in your hands. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be it glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all rejoice by saying, Amen. God bless you. May the good Lord keep you as our prayer.